Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a legal problem together. I've been doing some legal problems recently just uh, for the fun of it. Um, lead code 1756, design most recently used queue. This is tagged as the medium problem. So the idea is that we want to design a queue like data structure that moves the most recently used element to the end of the queue. Notice that we do not remove it or anything. We just move it over to the end of the queue, but the queue size remains the same. So the examples here is that given an init argument, we initialize the queue to be a range, a list of this range. So if we give an eight, then the queue is initialized with internal queue of one, two, three, four, all the way to eight. And if we call a fetch with three, this should move the third element, which in this case, since it's set, it's one indexed uh, in here. So it'll be one and two and three. So it'll move element three to the end of the queue. And this queue now becomes like this. So everything else remains the same, but the three gets moved to the end. And similarly, now if we want to fetch five, we want to move the six all the way to the end. Fetch two is moving this two all the way to the end. And fetch eight is moving the eighth item. In this case, it's just the two itself. So it's already at the end. So we just return it directly. So the most straightforward way is that we just, you know, internally keep like a list, initialize this queue with a range of one, two, and we want to fetch the kth item. So note it is one indexed here already. So we want to decrement it by one, that zero indexed. And the items that we want to fetch uh, will be, we can just pop it out of the queue. Now we have this item that's at the case. Uh, that is the key element in this queue. And uh, we want to add it back physically to this queue and return in like this. And one, two, okay. Plus. And if we submit Notice that this is a medium problem, and this is, I think, a little bit too easy for a medium problem. Actually, let's go over the complexity first. So the time complexity for this would be all of n, and space also all of n. Hint one is basically what we have implemented here. You, um, however, a better way to use is the square root decomposition technique. So I'm going to move it over here. So the square root decomposition technique so idea is that you can build chunks of size, square root of n for each fetch operation. You can search for the chunk, which has the, the ith element and update it. So this will be all of square root of n per operation. Isn't that nice? And move this element to an empty chunk at the end. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but the idea is simple. Basically, the idea is that only let's say we have an array like this. Currently for every single movement, let's say fetch three, then basically we have to move the entire list over. It's with a copy of it and move every single item one step forward and move the number three, the third index item all the way to the end. So the operation is all of n. Basically we are moving every single element in that list. So this has a big overhead. And then one way to optimize is that instead of moving the entire list every single time. We can try something like this. Like we separate things into smaller chunks. And the idea is that for every single operation, instead of moving the entire list, we only move a small chunk of that list. And the rest of this can potentially remain the same. So the overhead is a lot less. It's going to be the square root of n, basically the size of this chunk um, where we set to be chunk size square root of n. So each chunk has size square root of n. Same fetch three. First of all, first we have to find where the third element is. Fetch three, which is, uh, so it has to be minus one because we have to make it zero index. And now it becomes two. So two, so the idea is that we want to, this give us which chunk it is, and this give us 
which element within that chunk we want to look at. So in this case, uh, fetch three, chunk zero, pop. This case, key element in here, which will become something like this. And then we need to insert it to the end. So the only two the only two chunks that we need to move we need to change is the first one and then also the last one. In this case, the complexity will be kind of constant times square root of n, which is also just uh, square root of n. And notice that the middle chunk doesn't need to change at all; it stays the same. The only chunks that get to change would be the chunk which uh, contains the element that needs to be moved and also the last chunk. Uh, if it has more room. If it doesn't, we'll have to create a new chunk. So those are the only two operations needed. So I, in the above, this square root decomposition technique, the time complexity, like we mentioned here, will be square root of n. But space, since we are still keeping all of the elements here, so space will still be, still be all of n. So this second solution will be more optimal in terms of uh, time complexity. So basically it's less overhead for the queue operation and slightly faster time complexity. But I doubt we will need to have to, you know, code it out during an actual interview because the code itself can be quite lengthy and it's just very long to code it up. You have to Think about the corner cases, like check the end, if there's an empty chunk, if there's room uh, in the existing chunk, if not, we have to create a new chunk to add the new element and this and that. It'll be a great exercise, um, but I would say if there's enough time in the interview, I would go ahead and try the second approach. But I would first definitely uh, code up this first uh, solution just to solve the problem and then uh, bring up the second um, square root decomposition technique to indicate um, how we can optimize for the overhead here. So that's it for this episode. I will see you next time.